Hey guys, I'm going to show you how I convert my hybrid bike into an e-bike. The kit I chose to use is a e-bike link kit from eBay. Uh, it's a 1200 watt uh, rear hub motor, direct drive. And uh, here is the controller. The kit comes with two brake levers, a pedal assist sensor, a LCD meter, thumb throttle, some grips, torque arms, some miscellaneous wire loom and zip ties, and a 7 speed freewheel. The kit doesn't come with a battery, so I'm going to be reusing the battery from my other e-bike build. Uh, it is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour. And to mount the battery, I'm going to be using uh, this spare battery base that I bought off Aliexpress. I chose these parts because I want to keep the installation as simple as possible and cheap. And on top of that, this is my first uh, direct drive hub motor. So I'll get to see how this compares to my mid drive on my mountain bike. So let's get started on uh, tearing apart the bike and get the installation going. First thing I did is I removed the old rim and then I swapped over the tire over onto the new rim. The one thing to note is that the new rim only accepts a presser type tire tube and my old rim was only using a uh, Schrader type tire tube. So then I have to get a new tire tube for that. The wheel comes with a couple different washers. I decided to use these two washers on the inside like so. And then I install the wheel onto the frame, with the washers on the inside, between the frame. Here's a torque arm. I drilled a hole in it to line up with this bike rack mount, and then install it like this. For the other side, I had to deep pin the connector so I could remove the washer and nut. I then made a torque arm from an old brake pad, because the backing plate was 4mm thick. The next step is install the battery mount bracket. It normally bolts to existing bottom mounts, but on my bike, the bottom mounts don't line up correctly. So in my case, I had to drill three holes into the frame and use five millimeter rivet nuts to make my own mounts. Be sure to use steel rivet nuts because the aluminum ones are too soft and will strip easily. The next thing to do is install the battery mount and then the battery to make sure it slides in easily. Up next is the speed controller. I didn't like the aluminum finish, so I sanded and then painted it black. I then use some zip ties to secure it to the frame. The next thing to install is the rotor and pedal assist sensor. We'll start off by removing the cover. Then we'll take this tool here and loosen off the crank bolt. And then we'll use the other end of the tool to remove the crank. Then we use this bottom bracket tool to remove the nut. and then install the pedal assist sensor. Next is the rotor. Take note of the rotation of the rotor. Make sure nothing is binding, and then install the crank. So I'm going to go through the wiring that comes from the speed controller. We'll start off with these three wires here, the green, yellow, and blue, and this six pin connector, but with only five wires in it. These wires will go to the motor. And then we have the red and black wires here. These one will go to the battery. And then we have this five pin connector here. This will go to the LCD display. And then we have this three pin connector here. This one will go to the throttle. And then there's another three pin connector right here. This goes to the pedal assist sensor. And then we have this pair of two pin connectors. These will go to the brake levers. And we have this two pin connector here. This one goes to the headlight, if you have one. And then there is, oh, lastly, there is two blue wires here. These are supposed to be for the speed sensor but the kit doesn't come with one, so we'll just leave these aside. The next thing I installed is the LCD display, the menu button, and a thumb throttle. I left out the brake levers because I have some new shifters on order. I had to modify the thumb throttle because the one that came with the kit only was meant for the right-hand side, 
and the cable would uh, exit out the wrong way. So then I had to modify the casing so that the wire would come out the correct side. After connecting all the wire into the speed controller, there was a lot of excess wire. So then I spent a few hours shortening all the wires and this is how it looks right now. It's much cleaner. Now that I'm pretty much finished with this build, uh, let's see how much it weighs. Forty-seven point six pounds. That's about nineteen pounds lighter than my uh, mountain bike build. This is what the bike looks like after everything's installed. I wish there was a better way to hide the wiring, but I guess that's what you get for a DIY kit. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. The performance has been really good as well. For example, the first night I rode it, I rode fifty-one kilometers, averaging twenty-eight kilometers an hour and I came home with about 30% battery left. Compared to my mid-drive mountain bike, it's not quite as torquey off the line, but once you get going, it does climb hills a bit faster. I was also able to reach a top speed of 52 kilometers on flat ground. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.